Hello. Adele? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Simon Garfunkel? NGMI's back again. Ooh. Ooh. Guess who's here? It's Jacqueline. Oh. Yes, she is my girlfriend. Oh. Damn. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that was nice. What's up, guys? We got Jacqueline Noel Anderson here. Woo! We got Kevin Michael Lyons, and we Woo! got Jack Dumbass Dietrich. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, what's actually your middle name? Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, I was really embarrassed of it when I was a kid. I'm also embarrassed of Michael still. Thomas. Why would you be embarrassed of Michael? Because he didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on that. Yeah, he still does it. Well, so. Welcome to the NGMI podcast, or welcome back to the NGMI podcast, if you've been here before. I'm assuming you've been here before, but if you haven't been here before, then you probably need a little reminder to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, mm -hmm. leave the comments, smash the like button, yeah. and share the podcast with your mother, father, or grandfather, grandmother, uncle, uncle, cousin, cousin sibling, friend. relative of any kind, friend, butler, dog, priest. priest. If you're watching yeah. on Spotify or Apple Music, please leave a review. Thank you, Kevin. Good yeah. job. If you're there watching, we go. If you're watching on Apple or Spotify. <laughs> if you're watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Like, I gave it a good shot. <laughs> you, you, I tried. You oh, I didn't even realize that you said See, that. Yeah. Jack gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Two peas in a pod. I think I'm burnt out. <laughs> no, you know, you know who I think burn. is. Unburn you know, yourself. You know who's burnt out? Kevin. Kevin's burnt out. What do you mean? Kevin's sunburned. Kevin's sunburned. Sun sun burn. oh. Yeah. For three episodes. Yeah, I've been sunburned for three episodes. <laughs> yeah, three weeks. Crazy. Actually, you, we're spacing these out too. You so really yeah. need. I sat, sat through like a two-hour graduation practice, and then I drove two hours here facing the sun. Oh man. Was I your graduation sunburned. practice outside? Yeah. That's where you got the sunburn from. And the drive. I've been getting sunburned from drives. Well, you oh. gotta wear sunscreen. You're supposed to put sunscreen on when you go outside. You're Irish. You're pale skin, <laughs> fair skin, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. Skin cancer. Aging. Yeah. yeah, you gotta wear sunscreen every day. Yeah, you gotta wear sunscreen every day. Do you day? put lotion on your face every day? No. <sighs> okay. Well, first of all, fuck you, because your skin is beautiful. He's twenty. And I'm He's fucking twenty years old. Because I'm perfect. <laughs> but He's also, dead. He's young. You want to keep that sk perfect skin? You gotta wear sunscreen. It's true. Gotta get sunscreen. Yeah, Kevin. Jack got me started on skincare recently, so I've been doing a five-step skincare routine, sometimes six-step at night. Every yeah. night. Damn. Yeah. Do you do skincare? Mm-hmm. Every night? Yeah. Well, like almost. I could tell. Look at his skin. It's so clear. Mine's like a two to three step. Two to three step. Sometimes I exfoliate. Mine's like a go to bed type of step. <laughs> Dude, I used to pride myself. Do you wash myself. your sheets? How often? Uh, like once a week. Oh, that's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I'm that's, not, that's, that's I'm not disgusting. Come on. I, I, I'm Come expecting on. like a couple months or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like every two weeks, maybe. No, I wash them every week. Damn. Yeah. I don't know. I like, I've been noticing my age a lot more recently. You know, if I... My job is to take selfies and videos and stuff like that. So, like, when I pull up my camera and I'm looking at my face, I'm like, wow, I look old. I have, like, these wrinkles around my eyes. Forehead wrinkles are up the wazoo. It's because... Fuzzled brows. And it's because I don't do skincare. I don't use lotion. Yeah. And I have used to pride myself on, on taking a shower, scrubbing my face with a loofah in my body wash. Mm, just yeah, to get the sunscreen that. off or whatever I had on it during the day. And yeah. then just going to bed with, with nothing on there. And recently I've been like, all right, I got to tighten this shit up. Mm -hmm. I want to look like a, a baby. I want to look like a baby again. I don't want to look old. I don't want to look my age. Didn't somebody like, <laughs> didn't somebody comment or respond to you and be like, damn, I haven't seen you since Vine. You've got old. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, someone did. And it, it's true. It's yeah, been it's 10 like, years what? since I started <laughs> yeah. on Vine. So yeah. I'm definitely 10 years older. You're Everybody's dirty. fucking getting older. Yeah. Well, right? that's kind of how life works. Not Kevin. I just Not started, me. Yeah. Kevin's the same. I'm still about the Until that him. sunburn catches up with you. That's true. Psh. Sun ages you. You got to wear it every day. That's why I don't go out in the sun. Oh, okay. Jack has good. gotten into me. Got Jack. <laughs> Jack has gotten into me. No, I've gotten into Jack. Anyway, Jack okay. has gotten me into <laughs> taking care of my body a little bit more recently. So Good. With the whole anti-aging skincare regime, we also went to go get Botox together. And mm. she has no lines, no forehead lines or anything. But I've done Botox a few more times than you have. Yeah. And, and was, your lines were way more deep set. Way more deep set. And you we, know what I mean. We said, give me, give me uh, baby Botox. Just give me like the smallest amount. I just want like a little bit. I don't really want to feel like crazy. Yeah. I don't want to. I'll be claustrophobic if I can't move my face at all. I know. That's what one of the first things I said when he... 
uh, was like, oh, maybe I should get some Botox too. I was like, okay, I'm just letting you know that you won't be able to move your forehead at all. And you are already so claustrophobic. I yeah. think you'll have a panic attack. Yeah, so when we that. went, I made sure. I was like, just baby amount, a baby amount. We can always go back. And I got the same amount as her. Yeah. So that baby amount, I guess, is what she gets, but she doesn't need it. You got a bigger more. head. I have a I have a bigger head with deeper lines. <laughs> I do have a bigger head. I, 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 a big head, and now it's very yeah, round. You got a fat head. Shut up, dude. You have a fat head. No. And your hair is stupid too. Okay. Tell him his hair is stupid, Jack. <laughs> your hair is stupid. Oh. Your you hair is not stupid. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin, I just, yeah, want, I just want wait to say, to say that. that. I, was, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> so, Jack, what have you been up to, baby? Tell these guys, I know what you've been up to, but I want to know what you've been up to. From from your mind's eye, what have you been up to? Because I could say what I think I know you've been up to. Ugh, a whole lot of nothing. Ooh, I was going to um, say the same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then why'd you ask? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely in the past year have been struggling way more with my ADHD and my anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it's been a struggle getting any motivation to do anything, get any work done. So I have been going to therapy for the past like two months now. Love mm -hmm. my therapist. And I just started seeing a psychiatrist to get back on Adderall to help with my ADHD. And it's going. It's working-ish. It's working <laughs> Rubbing my dosage a bit. So that hopefully will put me right back on track. I think the... So... Both of us get addicted to these little phone games. She gets into oh, both of you have the into the phone oh, game. My God. It's all his fault. I never thought to once download a stupid iPhone game, yeah. and then he's sitting there playing. So I was like, "Oh, that looks kind of fun. Let me play." Uh, I'm literally a thousand dollars in the hole on a stupid game that for what? Actual dollars? Yes. Actual For what? Because are you at least beating Scott in that one? I got he deleted it and he moved on to like sixty five <laughs> other games and See, I'm Scott's, still on this one Scott's game. Scott's smart. He moves on. Oh, please. Yeah. ask him how much he spent on all of the games he's nothing. In. How much? I don't pay attention to that shit. Yeah. You can look. Yeah, he just in doesn't your phone, know. Probably. I'm not gonna look. He doesn't want to know. Do you think it's over five k? No. Four point nine. <laughs> Four point nine. No, I don't think it's over five k. I'm gonna be honest. over three k. Probably like a little bit under 3K. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd say probably like 2,500. I bet total. if you checked, you'd be shocked that it's 8K. I hope <laughs> the fuck it's not. <laughs> like, It's just they get you because the game is super fun and you beat a bunch of levels and then all of a sudden you literally cannot go to the next level. Like no matter how good you are, you cannot get to the next level unless you buy the power up. So if you want to keep playing the game, you got to pay. It's so stupid. It's either that or you watch an ad for 30 seconds every 10 minutes. You have to watch another ad. Every, yeah. I played one game that like I had to watch an ad just to play the next level every single time. I was like, there's got to be some way to like pay to remove the ads. And there wasn't. And I was like, this is actually a fun game. Like I would love to play this, <laughs> but I have to watch a 30 second ad every time I want to do another level. It's, it's ridiculous. And but, these are like free games, but yet somehow I'm spending all this money. Whereas maybe if we just purchased a game for twenty dollars one time we wouldn't have to pay anything inside the game yeah right exactly. so that's how they get you they're like it's free it's and then pay five hundred dollars huh yeah. no that's ridiculous but we were we we're getting off topic here the adhd is bouncing around the room <laughs> um i don't even know what we were talking about in the first place we were talking about you being on medication in order to be more productive and okay. not lay in bed all day and play video games on your phone or yeah. scroll through tiktok and whatnot which I think is, you know, something that a lot of people have been struggling with throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It hit you really hard. You used to be really active and go to classes in the middle of the week or, in the, or early in the morning. Yeah. You used to go to classes early in the morning or, you know, acting class or go grocery shopping or walk to a yeah. coffee store, or hang out with friends or whatever. And now it's just become, uh, I'm going to hang out at home and I don't really want to do work. Or I've just anything. become very complacent. And that is something uh, like one of the um, symptoms of, ADHD is like you get really stuck in your routine. So before the pandemic, I was, I was super active, working out maybe twice a day, constantly on the go. And then because of the pandemic, I got real comfortable doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And now that the pandemic is, I mean, it's dwindling and things are open again and people can travel. I'm still in the, oh, but we're just gonna lay and do nothing today because there's nothing to do. And I have right. to get out of that mindset. Yeah, and I think you will and that'll yeah. that'll be fine you're working towards it i think it's gonna happen jack you never really went through that did you what do you mean a laziness oh, i can get pretty lazy <laughs> <laughs> it's more so like 
if I have to get something done and I, I'll like play video games instead. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's more fun. Of course. I'm about having fun. I, I, <laughs> I just want to have fun. I don't want to take responsibility for things. Of course. I mean, everybody, right? But I think everybody does it to some extent and I'll do right. it as well. Especially like if I'm overwhelmed, if I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to film a podcast, a YouTube video, go to a music session and do this and that. I'm like, I need to cancel something. I can't, I don't want to do all this. And like, I'll wake up and be like, I just, I need to, I need to take an hour to play a video game or something like that. Some, right. some sort of brain number or whatever. I, I think it sometimes can be good to put it off, but you can only put it off for so long. You have to kind of get up and start doing things eventually. Yeah. Yeah. You can't Fast. allow yourself to be overwhelmed yeah. forever. You so, have sometimes to start... it's good, you know, cause I'll, I'll be studying for a few hours. And I'm like, all right, my toast, like I need a break for a little while, but then you have to get back into it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Always. Just That's for anything like that. the hardest Dude, part. Insane that back. you can study. What do you mean? Like I would never study in school <laughs> i like studying at night <laughs> studying at night is like my favorite like r- very relaxing to me yeah what the it, i mean fuck? couldn't it be me I mean, no that's good for you no that that makes sense that it's relaxing because it's boring just like reading a book you know you're not like oh yeah. crazy i mean sometimes there's books that you're like oh i love this or whatever but books reading a book that's like informative and not really like right uh, great not a great story but like fiction not not like a super like involved book. It's more informative than it. It's something you read before bed. It helps you fall asleep at night. You know? Yeah, a nice cup of coffee. Sit at home. You cup know, of coffee on. before at bed. Time. Oh yeah, decaf. <laughs> you gotta study. I gotta stay up and study. Oh, so that you probably lingers coffee. in your body so for like not, five hours. That's not relaxing and winding down. Yeah, I'm relaxed <laughs> <laughs> while I'm studying and stressed out. But it's relaxing because I'm like sitting there studying. He drinks the coffee earlier on, right? Then three hours go by. The coffee's wearing off as yeah. he's studying, okay? True, true. Well, I how drink a cup of coffee, coffee, and then I drink a cup of coffee while I'm studying. Like, what? how long <laughs> until the coffee to bedtime? It doesn't matter to me. You could drink a cup of coffee, like, going to bed. There's a lot of people like that that can drink <laughs> a cup of coffee. You're a Red Bull connoisseur, though. I do like Red Bull, yeah. So, <laughs> that kind of, like, I feel like your body's kind of oh, has like a good to tolerance you. to yeah. caffeine. <clears throat> Definitely. Yeah. Huh. We got we to gotta, we gotta work on that. You might develop That's ocular. my one vice. That's I like, I like <laughs> Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Too much caffeine. You might develop ocular mycomia. Okay? Oh, yeah. Is that the gotta, twitchy eye you got? That's how you get twitchy eye. Yeah. That's from caffeine? I thought that was it's from stress and lack of sleep. All three. Caffeine, stress, and lack of sleep. Yeah. The root cause of everything. The root cause of everything. War. <laughs> Could be. What did you say? Or? War. Oh, war. No, dude. I mean, that's why Putin's <laughs> such an asshole, man. He doesn't sleep enough. He drinks too much caffeine. They and could he's stressed be. Out. He's got really? could be. Fucking eyeball twitch. Fucking ocular mycomia. Um, so therapy. How's therapy been going? Uh, good. Honestly, I mean, I don't know why I said, oh, good. It's going fucking amazing. I learned so much there that I don't even think to think about. Like, she gives me perspective and helps me see things the way that other people are seeing things because you know a lot of times you think the way you think is how everyone thinks and that's simply not true like just for example if you're a narcissist you think that well (laughs) yes but no but also like so if scott and i would get into an argument he's the type of person where he wants to like take a breath collect his thoughts walk away and then we can talk about it later yeah where i because of my anxiety i'm like no now we gotta talk right now i gotta we gotta figure it out right now because i'll have a panic attack that if he walks away like oh my god it's gonna make things worse and da, 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 da. he's gonna leave me this yeah. is over like- versus that's so silly to think like he just wants to breathe instead of us with all this tension then keep talking and i never for a second stop to like think that other people handle arguing or whatever in different type of ways so once i realize that it's much easier for me to kind of settle myself down and be like okay yeah we can take a second we can breathe we can collect our thoughts and then talk about this in not such a heated way Mm -hmm. and i feel like since i've gone to therapy we never really fought to begin with, but I feel like now we really like, there's nothing. Cause I just, I, I really try my best to understand all sides of things yeah. and not take things so personally anymore. Yeah. That was the other thing. I kept getting really frustrated with Scott for things that literally had nothing to do with me. And like, I would take hit, like if he was upset about something and in a bad mood, mm-hmm. I would take it personally. Like he's in a bad mood against me now. And my therapist was like, if he's in a bad mood about something that has nothing to do with you, 
what don't take it personally don't take it offensively just yeah. be there for him and if he wants space give him space yeah and then he'll be, be over like, it and it's you don't have to panic that he's gonna break up with you because he's in a bad mood like I, I would get like a negative comment or like something wouldn't be doing well that i posted or something i was working on like just wasn't working out and you know i'd maybe be in a down mood and be like i'm just like really low energy right now and like jack would like take that upon herself like as if yeah. it's her fault you know it's, it's kind yeah. of like we talked about people pleasing and stuff like that on the podcast before. And it's kind of like the root of her personality is that she likes to make other people happy. She's a people pleaser. So when it comes to, you know, seeing someone upset, she wants to do something to make them happy. So she'll take the blame for that person being upset when it has nothing to do with her. Yeah. And I consider myself a people pleaser too. And I hate seeing other people upset and I want to make them happy, but I won't blame myself for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I do do that. Uh, but also as far as like us arguing or getting into fights or whatever like we never really did we don't we don't get into like very many arguments and if we do they're usually really small mm -hmm. and maybe we can talk more specifically about when you went to therapy that day what you were talking about the birthday present oh <laughs> the, the birthday present. oh we're gonna bring this up <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Good thing we got the angry thumbnail face. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm using. <laughs> We have this reoccurring argument that occurred after her birthday because her birthday is, it's a day of the year, right? I should know in advance to get her a great gift or, you know, something thoughtful at yeah, least sure. on February 22nd. That's her birthday. You remembered. Okay. <laughs> um, I went out like the night before to grab a gift and like couldn't find something and ended up giving her a selfie stick and a card that says like, I guess we'll just have to go on a trip together. So I didn't like... You know, I wrote a longer message out, but it wasn't it wasn't like a super lovey dovey message. And it was just like I like to get Jack gifts whenever she says that she wants something or like likes this thing, then I'm like, hmm, I'll be on my phone and I'll order that thing for her. Like Or when. even like you were getting Jordans for yourself and you're like, Oh, I think Jack would like these and got me a pair. His love language is definitely gift giving, like to show his love. Yeah. It's just, it's, I don't think it's my love language. It is something that I like to do. Like if I like being generous in all ways, Kevin, Acts is of, it one of the ways he shows his love is gift giving. I don't know. How many gifts has he given to so many people? A lot. He is a gift giver. Yeah, I'm generous in general. <laughs> what I like would giving your love gifts. Language be then if it's not gift giving. It's the way you accept love and the way you give love. I'm I am you also give acts love. of service. I also do things for people yes, because I like. You can have multiple, babe. Yeah, I know. I'm saying gift giving isn't my like number one. I'm saying yes, I do like giving gifts because I'm overall just like generous. Like mm -hmm. I like doing things for people. Yes. Whether it's a gift or it's a thing, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm, right. I'm like you know I'm not just like okay here love me here's a gift. Here's your shoes. No, right. no, no, no. That's... They're all very thoughtful and yeah, very generous. Yeah. So on her birthday, when I couldn't think, like I did rack my brain for like two weeks. I was like, what can I get her? I was, I was texting her best friend asking like, do you have any suggestions or ideas for like what I could get Jack, mm -hmm. what I could get Jack for her birthday? Because she hasn't like brought up anything recently that like I could go out and like do or get for her. Well, I kind of stopped bringing up things because he really would. Every time I would mention <laughs> one thing, like three days later, here you go. And I'd be like, oh my God, thank you. But also I cannot repay you for this. <laughs> like, I want this Louis so I stopped bag. dropping hints, which so partially this is my fault. But... <laughs> so when her birthday came around and I didn't get like a solid gift to show that I was thinking about her, um, I ended up getting her a little selfie stick center because she wanted to start doing her more like makeup videos and TikTok videos and i was like this is something that shows that i i listen to her and i know and i think about like what she's trying to do for her career what she's like working on it's a travel portable light whatever but it was a simple thing it was really easy and i gave her that and she's like wow so then <laughs> that is okay first of all that is not what i did you said thanks yeah this is great and the note i guess we can go somewhere you didn't even like pick a place i, okay, I see that cool. though i can i can be like yeah what the fuck so I, that, I, okay so I now i'm gonna take over telling no, the but story no, you can't because i will i will let you explain more but i i had to Objection. explain to her several times like <laughs> <Lack> a <of> foundation <laughs> hearsay your honor <laughs> leading i brought up several times i was like after like she expressed her concerns and her concerns were that... Well, can I tell it that part? So when he gave me that, I took it offensively because one, clearly I have a problem with taking things offensively when I don't have to or like personally. Uh -huh. So we already know that's one of the things that I needed to work on. But secondly, 
because he's always been so generous and such a gift giver and it, w it was so clear that he was thinking about me and whatever, I immediately got terrified. I was like, oh my God, he knows when my birthday is. This wasn't like this just randomly happened and he didn't get me a present, which means like to me, he wasn't thinking about me and he's not thinking about me. So right. does this mean that we're going in a bad direction because he would never not get me a present? So I started spiraling and my anxiety, as I was just saying, has been way worse lately. So I just was like, couldn't stop thinking about the fact that he didn't get me a present. It wasn't because I'm a spoiled little bitch. Not that much, at least. Um, <laughs> I just genuinely started spiraling, being like, oh my God, he didn't get me a present. He doesn't care about me the way he used to. Yeah. That that was the insecurity. And so we had the conversation a few days after where she brought it up. And I was like, I explained everything. I was like, I was thinking for weeks about what to get you. I could not think of something. And I didn't want to get you just another purse or something like that. I wanted to get you something thoughtful if I was going to do anything. And it ended up coming down to the wire. It's where I just like, I could not figure out a gift to get you. It doesn't mean I don't care. I don't care about you. It doesn't mean I care about you any less than I have cared about you this whole time because I couldn't think of a gift. I just legitimately this time just could not think of something. It had she just like put in a location on the car and be like, we're going to France. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just so it feels a little so, more intentional. In hindsight. So yeah, that was like a, <laughs> but this is a conversation that recurred yeah. eight times, eight times where there was tears and me reassuring her that yes, I still love you. This was a, huge fluke to where just this doesn't just didn't happen i just didn't get a good gift and i'm sorry like you know i still love you don't be insecure this that's not what this is yeah and uh it came down to like a, a boiling point on my birthday we went down to my family's uh for like a family dinner mm -hmm. and we got into a little argument like at the dinner table and like started i went to the bathroom she got up with me and we were kind of like arguing outside the bathroom i was like mm. i don't want to do this here my family's here i don't i don't want to like have an argument do you yeah. remember at, it, kevin at the family dinner for scott just stopped talking after a while yeah scott just stopped talking yeah and i and like well, the party uh, still was fun and oh, scott's mom it was oh, well both your moms um <laughs> uh, mine too uh, all three of your mom okay uh she was like Jack, you look sad. What's wrong? And like, you know, when you are sad and someone says, what's wrong? And you're like, oh, yeah. no, I'm fine. I'm literally fine. I'm fine. I'm just tired. I'm fine. Because I obviously like the last thing I wanted to do was make a scene in front of his family. Like I right. am so embarrassed that they even saw us get like frustrated with each other. But it was, it was, that was a lot. I was very, very hurt because I was, again, taking it in such a different way way than i should have like i i could have easily just understood now because obviously it's well over and because i've talked to my therapist about it mm -hmm. uh, yeah but like so at that dinner i can't even remember what triggered the upsetness but it was like something about something yeah it was like gifts being given at a birthday or something like that and it like reawakened it and we ended up arguing kind of there mm -hmm. and i was like i don't want to do this i don't want to have an argument like right here and she's like okay just walk away sort of thing and i was like I, I have to, like, I don't want to argue in front of everyone right. sort of thing. And then we drove home in like an awkward silence. It was my birthday. So she was like, well, I got you your birthday present. Do you want it? And I was like, I'm not really in the mood to get a birthday present right now. So like, I'd, I'd rather wait till like we're, we're over this and we're in better moods and like, you know, we're past it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, Jay and Joe set it up while while we were gone, so I think you're gonna see it. And I so was you like, kind of have to take <laughs> take it now. <laughs> so we sat down on the couch, and she showed me the surround sound system she got. And I like, all right, we got rid of like the little argument phase for a second. I had to I, I brushed it off, and I was like, thank you, I love it, it's amazing, I love you, and we were good for like, good, right? And then mm -hmm. all the friends that were in town came into the house: Joe, Todd, <laughs> Jay, Natalie. Like they came mm -hmm. over. And I was like, Whoa. and they were in like party mode and Scott was obviously <laughs> still not, he was like, okay, but he still was not, right. he, he was not in like party mode by any, yeah. I, yeah. I was okay to the point where I was like, all right, I'm now I've received the gift and I've showed my gratitude for it. And now we can resolve this problem. But instead of being able to resolve the problem, it was like, all right, it's your birthday. Now we're all going to hang out and we're going to drink in the kitchen. Like, Shut <laughs> yeah. And I was just sitting there looking miserable the whole time while Jack was, Jack was like, come on, we're in a good mood now. And Joe was there hanging out with us. I was us. like trying to get him to be happy. Yeah. And then, yeah, since he was 
not Scott, you and we like where I take things too personally and then I get like super elevated because my anxiety just is like ah! you do have a, a tendency that if he like if Scott gets in a bad mood or something he can't just snap out of it like he like because maybe because of the people pleasing but even if I were screaming fighting with someone if I walked out of the room and there were other people like I'd instantly be able to be like hi how are you because I really just I hate making other people feel uncomfortable oh I could never do that yeah, yeah. once I'm in a bad mood it's like well that's how, yeah and it's, that's it's how tough. Scott was and so for me seeing Scott sitting there looking miserable I again go right in my head thinking oh my god all his friends are going to be like why is Scott miserable it's obviously Jack's fault Jack's a terrible girlfriend they should break up like well, that this was is your literally fault what time. my brain tells me <laughs> okay. he's got you there but okay but so the resolution of this is that we later that evening then drunk had the conversation a little bit and kind of resolved it and then we didn't really because we were drunk so the next morning I was still upset and we had the conversation one more time she went to therapy I back. literally went to therapy, sat down on my therapist's couch. She's like, so how is everything? Because we, I had to leave in the middle of us, like still trying to hash this out. So I sit down on my therapist's couch. She goes, how are, how's our, how, how are things going? And I go, no good. And I start hysterically <laughs> crying. <laughs> but so yeah, so she talked me off the ledge and was like, you need to stop taking things so personally and thinking the worst of the worst. Like, no, I bet you nobody's thinking anything of it. And you're giving yourself this like false narrative that's causing you to be even more freaked out and more panicked. Yeah. And um, this is something that I really, really uh, appreciated. So she was like, when people get upset, you go until your child parts, you revert to your child self. So your child self, when you're upset is you kind of have like, you want to talk right now and it's now 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 like a little girl being like mommy now now and that's how you are where scott when he gets upset he likes to walk away and breathe and whatever so you guys need to realize that your child part doesn't complement the way he handles anger and then his child part reverting is like the getting in a bad mood and staying in it around people being pouty and everything like, like a little like a little boy having a temper know. tantrum or something yeah and so and for me that's something that i don't do so she just basically was like you need to realize that not everyone handles being upset or arguing or whatever it may be the way you do so you can't expect them to want to resolve it the same way you want to yeah and that doesn't mean that things aren't going to work out. If Scott wants to leave the room and breathe, that does not mean he's going to walk back in 10 minutes later and say, it's fucking done. <laughs> he's just breathing. And if anything, we're going to have, you guys are going to have a much more clear conversation because you've had that second to breathe. Mm -hmm. So I came home from therapy and I immediately went right up to Scott and I was like, I am so sorry. I have been taking everything that you're feeling and making it about me and making it my problem and something that i have to solve and resolve when that's not the case at all like you are allowed to have your feelings you're allowed to feel the way you want to feel and if you are in a bad mood and you want to kind of sit by yourself for a little bit i don't have to get under your skin to try to fix you i i can leave you and let you breathe and come to your own decision of okay I'm, I'm okay now or no i'm not i'm gonna go just lay down instead and either way i don't it's not my fault or my problem i mean if it is my fault then we'll resolve it but <laughs> but yeah so that after i get my space <laughs> yes but so that's really just helped me so much because it was it was really unfair of me to be so pushy to you to talk about whatever it was we were arguing about when you just really wanted to breathe in space and it's like especially because i'm such an extrovert and you're extroverted but you're also introverted so you kind of shell up and you want to just like okay i just need to like i'm gonna have a panic attack if you keep yelling at me and i only get louder then so mm -hmm. it, it just it didn't match and it wasn't working and, and that's why my therapist was like a lot of people break up if they argue a lot because they don't realize that people have different ways of handling problems yeah. and then they can never come to a conclusion but it because you're willing to like realize that scott needs to handle it one way and you need to handle it one way mm -hmm. this is the best for your relationship and yeah i don't, I don't think good. that i don't think that there was ever like a we're gonna break up because of this but it was a recurring argument that was like getting no i but just that, can't believe like how big the argument got over like something so small and i but that's why therapy is so important because i honestly maybe to this day still would have felt that way and right. felt so right. hurt and crazy and coming up with 
scenarios that were not even close to being true well, had like, I not. Like Scott said, like Scott is very generous with everyone yeah. like, giving gifts and shit all the time. Like Scott, anytime, like it doesn't matter if he shows up anywhere to a birthday party or Christmas. Like usually it doesn't matter what Scott brings because everyone's just happy Scott's around. Yeah. That's, that's how I am more usually. Like I don't really care about gifts. I just like having people around. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't think... It just, it sounds crazy to me to like get so upset over something like it that. Was, it was because moment. of the thought spiraling af- about Afterwards, it. It's yeah. not yeah. about not getting a gift, Kevin. I know, I get that. I'm just saying. Because that's yeah. what I even said to him. I was like, it's not even about like... It's just the thought. Not get... Exactly. Right. It was the thought that I was like... Oh, oh I'm on the back have, burner. Like, I'm, yeah, you're not, like, oh, you just don't care right. anymore. That's all it was. Because I don't care at all. Like, even if you just brought home like roses and said like oh we're going somewhere specific so i just knew it felt more it doesn't even matter it doesn't even matter because it doesn't matter but i know that you just couldn't figure out what to get me and that's all that that was it wasn't a matter of i don't care yeah yeah so because it was a recurring argument and then i had to keep on like reassuring like it's not that stop like she needed a third person a third party that was like outside to tell her basically the exact same thing that I was telling her. Like, but yeah. it doesn't from, matter from, from, from an outside perspective. I know yeah. that's what I'm saying. You needed a third party I, perspective to tell you, why do you think this? That is that what he said? No. I think yeah. that's what makes therapy so good is because a lot of times you're surrounded by people that just want to like make you feel better. And will just kind of like right. tell you or, or help you cope where like a therapist will tell you what you like need to hear, need yeah. to hear. And like, even if it's not like, the happy answer or something to like just like lay it out from an unbiased opinion yeah and when i first started meeting with my therapist one of the first things i told her is i have a problem with people pleasing and and uh so if you could be a little more just kind of tell me what i need to do instead of doing yeah. the whole, well why do you think that so she really is she does so when i was in there being all upset about scott she was like do you hear everything you just said none of that is true but yet you firmly believe it just because you started spiraling from one small thing. Right. And yeah, I don't know. It just completely opened my eyes to, yeah, other people's perspectives and how people handle things. And it's not just my way. Not oh, that I, yeah. not that I, cause that does sound very like narcissistic, but I just, I don't know, I guess because I've handled conflict this way my whole life, it feels so foreign to know that like you like to breathe and walk away before you finish it. Yeah. When I've always been like, let's talk right now, figure this out right now. I like to figure things out as well. Mm-hmm. But because like it, it started to get worse as it continued to happen because it was the same thing over and over again to where it was like, I can't do this again sort of thing. Like at least give me like a moment. Yeah. <laughs> We're like mm-hmm. not at the dinner table right now sort of thing to where like it got a little bit more difficult. But but again, like now that we've been talking about this for so long, like <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like you're you're at fault for everything, and like you've done every, it all wrong, and your therapist like told you how to handle it. But like obviously, like I was in the wrong too, so it's not like it's not like everything's all your fault or anything like that. But it sounds that way on this podcast right now because it's like I went to therapy, I figured out that it's. I had to. I had to go back Scott's and apologize. Like wizard to Scott. of Ozing it as the therapist, yeah. like pretending to be someone like you should do this. I know she came back, and I was like, "Damn, I love your therapist." She came back after arguing with me, and she apologized to me. <laughs> I thought she was gonna come back and be like, "My therapist said you're a piece of shit." <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's but that's why I am kind of. It's I, I am just taking all the blame because that's what my therapist basically told me. She was like, "You are in the wrong here. You are." completely letting your anxieties eat you up and all that's doing is hurting your relationship where you got to just like breathe and realize you're it's all in your head mm-hmm. and actually have a clear conversation with Scott he's told you over and over and over again that he loves you why are you so panicked so yeah. and then uh I also think that that was a very that time period was like when my anxiety was the most high because I had just, yeah, I had just started going to therapy because my my anxiety was so, so bad that I felt like I really couldn't function. Yeah. So that was, I think, like my second or third session with her. So I was still in peak really bad anxiousness. Yeah. Um, it's definitely calmed down so much since then. Yeah, we, we haven't since that day we haven't had a single like argument about like anything. not at all i feel like we've like <laughs> i feel like we're like renew in the honeymoon phase which is very interesting because <laughs> i mean like we didn't never really argue before but like yeah. it was like that one thing there was like a time period of Underlying your peak anxiety yeah. where there was one problem that was causing like this 
snappy at each other sort of thing. Yeah. I'm honestly grateful that that happened because, like I said, moving forward, if we do have an argument, I can be much more logical and understand you and you can understand me now because I had that huge therapy session where I came back and shared everything with you. You know what I mean? Where yeah. if that fight never happened and I never talked about it with my therapist and like maybe a fight down the line would be a fight that lasted a week and a half just because I couldn't let go of it. Mm-hmm. So and now I'm the we're one already who can't let that. go of stuff. That's my problem. I know. I'm the one who holds on to things that make me angry and through that time period was also when Jack was like, I think you should really try like to do something about stabilizing your mood for like, cause you get into these upset moods and you can't let go of things. You hold grudges and you stay upset about something that we've already resolved the issue to, which is why I was like, all right, I'll give the Prozac another shot. I'll try it. I'll see if that cures my anxiety and my feelings of, you know, not being able to let something go or always, always getting angry over something small and then like turning it into something bigger kind of spiraling like you did about the birthday mm-hmm. thing but about other things so look at us mental health journey oh yeah we're therapy on our, we're Shout on our out. mental health journey we love therapy we love in this therapy. house Do you go to therapy yeah really mm-hmm. why just because everyone should go to therapy <laughs> that's why jack is so calm all the time yeah I, I genuinely think like everyone should be in therapy everyone should I, Especially because like my, so my sister's a therapist and she always says, you don't have to have something going on in your life to go to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy could be, even if you have nothing to talk about the day with your therapist, if you just want to like shoot the shit, talk about Marvel movies, whatever you want to talk about, like just have for when you do need someone, a completely like non-biased person who's going to kind of tell you how it is. And that's why it's also really important to find the right therapist. You're like, I'm just not sure how I feel about the new Doctor Strange. And they're like, well, it was good. <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> <Fuck up. laughs> but that's why it's really important to find the right therapist for you. Because if I were with a more gentle therapist who kind of was like, well, why do you feel that way? Because you know, a lot of therapists right. do try to bounce around. They, they treat you the way that you should like need to be handled so for me i need my therapist to kind of be like no jack you're wrong right some people just need need to vent out and figure out like what they're doing so yeah Yeah. so i think yeah therapy is has honestly done so much for me already and also being in therapy has made me more comfortable with the idea of going back on medication because i know that there's someone who's going to get to see me once a week in mm-hmm. person and if maybe the medicine's making me a little weird or whatever then she can kind of monitor that and be like you know what i think this is a little too high of a dosage right. and whatnot yeah you're acting a little f- too focused <laughs> you're a little too f- i've never seen you this focused <laughs> it's cool yeah. we're living in a time where it's more accepted yeah yeah I, I have my first therapy session scheduled my first one back i did therapy when i was younger it's, it's kind of funny like how long I haven't been in therapy for how much I write about mental health in my songs and yeah. like talk about it in YouTube videos and tweet about it and whatnot. Like I haven't been to therapy in a long time and I, I have tweeted about therapy. I've been like, I hope to God there's some kids going to school to be therapists and doctors and psychologists right. because the whole world right now is like going that direction of like needing it much, much more than they yeah. did. Well, that's also what my therapist said. She was like, we live in uh, like this day and age. There is so much going on and it's all at our fingertips within seconds. We know everything that's going on in the world. Like, of course, everyone has anxiety. Of course, people have ADHD when there's apps like TikTok that you can watch 100 videos in 10 minutes. Like Mm -hmm. everybody's mind is just all over the place thinking about all these things then also if you're kind of in a dead-end job or you're just unhappy with your life and you go on instagram and you see these people living the best life in hawaii and in bali like of course you're gonna feel down on yourself so right now everyone really does need that little help of just being okay and finding the center in their life again which brings us to affordable health care because therapy can be expensive, you know? Yeah, I pay, I pay out of my pocket. I'm lucky enough that I can afford to pay out of pocket, but that's why a lot of people don't get therapy because it is, it's expensive. It's expensive. And yeah. like, even if you have insurance to find a good therapist in your network can be very hard as well. So Also, you have to go for it, like something specific. Right. Yeah. It's, if, it's to get covered by insurance. It just kind of sucks because like mental health should be really prioritized. And I feel like 
if every kid, even if nothing's wrong, just like went to therapy during, because I think when you're a kid, it's like the most like pivotal stage of like how you get your coping mechanisms, all these things. So like if they're going to therapy, I feel like yeah, be a better place. Especially because like, kids are so, they pick up on everything. And so my sister, again, she is a therapist. She worked in a children's hospital, children's mm-hmm. hospital in New Orleans. And most of the kids she worked with, um, at risk kids. So any kids that had contemplated or attempted suicide or like just really sad stories. And every one of those children came from really fucked up family lives and they had no opportunity to talk to a therapist until they were checked into this hospital because it was like a last resort. And my, it breaks my sister's heart because she's like, if if these children had the access to a therapist while they're in these home lives, one, maybe they could have been removed from their home life before it got to this point. Yeah. And two, at least learn how to handle it and deal with it and whatever it may be so that they never have to be checked into the hospital because they're at risk, you know? My sister has had, she probably has 30 plus letters from kids saying, Dear Dr. Kelly, you saved my life. Thank you so much. I owe you everything. La da da da. Meanwhile, my sister can't even pay her rent every single month because that's how shit money she makes. She's saving kids' lives and she makes no money because people still claim mental health is so important and they like to blame the shooting on mental health, but then they're not doing anything for mental health. They're not trying to make it mandatory that you have to do a mental health assessment before you buy a gun, funding for, uh, for mental health care, funding for uh, social workers. None of that is happening. And it's like, so don't sit here and be like, oh, mental health is the reason for this crazy serious issue. And then, oh, but we're not gonna give any money to mental health because it's actually not that serious. Yeah, that's what what I'm saying is like the budgeting in the country is just like all kind of fucked up. Like we we got a lot of things going towards military or the police or whatever. Not saying that like, "Ah, fuck this or that, but, but teachers and social work and mental health should be prioritized a lot more, especially as we're seeing mental health seriously downgrade. Seriously. Yeah, like you said, like right now is a super controversial thing that we need to put more money into like all of that research and all that funding, because especially with all the new shootings and stuff around, like it's one of the biggest things right now. For yeah. yeah. Everybody is going through something and it, it's it's just only gotten worse and worse over the last fucking hundreds of years. Every Every year it's been... You know, mental health has been on the decline. I, I was talking about YouTube videos and how like TikTok has really taken over because of the short form content. You know, you just scroll through and you're getting a quick fix and it's all different all the time. I was like, I know that young people growing up with all of this stuff at their fingertips have very bad attention spans because mine oh, is yeah. getting worse and worse and I'm 30. Mm-hmm. I can't watch a 10 minute YouTube video myself. I'll be like, yeah. I, if I watch it on my phone, I'm like, I have to like, go up and check some other notification or like check Twitter while I'm listening to it. Like I cannot just like focus on that one thing anymore, yeah. which is like, it's even like sitting down and watch a movie. Like I can't just sit down and watch the movie and fully enjoy it without like playing a game like on com- your phone. compulsively like checking something. Yeah. Shout out to the people watching the podcast. They got yeah. good attention span. I think my attention span's gotten actually a lot better. Like since COVID started. Jesus Christ. Is it cause you, you, <laughs> but is it because you cause you've really like buckled down and been crushing school, so Yeah. I don't I don't feel very like distracted with things at all anymore. Yeah. I feel the least distracted when I'm like I set myself up to do something and I'm like, well I'm not gonna fucking pick up my phone. You know, like if I go to work out and I'm like, All right, well this is my, my hour where I'm not texting or oh, whatever. Yeah. Like that's the best time for me. And this is why I deleted my most recent game that I got into because I would like <laughs> it's like an idle game. Like you don't even have to play the game to play it. So like, I just have to have it on. So I'd be like working out and then I go check it. You look at it. Like (laughs) I have to like click a button just to make sure it's still running. And then I put it back down. It's not, (laughs) I I just got addicted to the idea that my character was growing. And I was like, why am I doing this? I literally said it this morning. I was like, I don't even play this game that I am playing. Yeah. Why am I doing it? Like, so they get you. I can't believe you guys play fucking iPhone games. <laughs> I can't so believe that's either. Bonkers, I literally can't believe it's it. It's great either. to do. You like, might be the only two people. I, have, I haven't played iPhone games since I was in like middle school. Don't shit. start. You lose all your money. I'm not going don't to. Do it. I didn't even know that. Was, I was like, what money? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not much. Also, Scott, did you you cut your own hair, right? Yeah. Did you mess up like the side of it right there? 
What are you talking about? You have like one patch of hair and then it like your forehead like goes. Oh God. He's afraid his hair is receding and you just pointed it out. Oh my God. I don't God. know if it's receding. It just looks like you cut it really wrong. No, no, I, didn't I don't cut think it wrong. you just don't have a sh- like straight hairline. I don't have a straight hair. Like no. it's just it just kind of like wobbles. I have hair here and then it goes back and down. It looks kind of cool, but it kind of it's kind of like this. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of on this side too, right? Yeah, but this one is a little further back because I have a cowlick right here. No, yeah, that's yeah, what it's it is. a cowlick. <laughs> You're going bald. I'm just joking. <laughs> You're gonna be bald. I'm soon. like, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I never stop thinking about it. Now everyone's gonna think about that. And someone said like that was a couple other comments that I got on my shit was like your hairline's receding. I'm like, I actually my hair is my hairline is exactly where it's always been. <laughs> yeah, you I gotta just, get a hairline. I have like he is. You're chilling. They, I mean, we have really strong hair. All genes. three of you brothers have really wonderful thick hair. Thanks. My we're dad, all blood brothers. My dad has a full head of hair. My grandpa fucking know, died with too. hair on his head. Like, there's just, you know, we got Does hair. Does your dad have hair? He's got hair. Hell yeah. His is, his is fine hair, though. Oh, my God. You need to meet John Joe. We'll have him on after you guys get back from Ireland. Oh, that'd be good. Be oh, good yeah, time. Be, Irish accent. He'll be fresh in the <laughs> yeah. Irish accent. <laughs> yeah, be oh, it's deep. so funny. Whenever he hangs out with, like, his Irish friends... It oh, gets yeah. just thumbs in. I don't know. But that's the end of the podcast, guys. <laughs> if you've been watching, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. We'd love to know what you think. If you're uh, having relationship problems, like Jack said, go to therapy. If you're having any sort of mental issues, anything going on in your head that you feel like you need to talk to someone about that is not a part of that issue, then talk to someone unbiased. Talk to a therapist. Yeah. If you can't afford a therapist, hopefully you have a good close friend that is not involved in that situation. There's also a lot of um, really good websites that you can sign up for that have therapy for i think as low as like 19 dollars a month so but there we're not are... getting sponsored for this episode so we're not gonna let you know what they are <laughs> just kidding do you know any of them <laughs> yes better uh, cerebral and better help yeah i hear that in podcast on this episode yeah. brought to you by better help i've done i've done uh ad reads on my youtube for both of them um and i looked into them and i also asked my sister and she was like, yeah, those are great. Um, the only sleep. problem is they don't pay their therapist well, but that's because the therapy is so cheap. But a lot of therapists like to do that because a lot of people, they know that most uh-huh. people can't afford $120 yeah. an hour for a therapy session. It's like the Uber of therapy. Yeah. They're just doing it for the Accessible. greater good of the world. Yeah, yeah, they really are. Therapists. Yeah, shout are, out. They're, they are the freaking best. And really, they can totally change your outlook on life. So... Look, should, I'm living proof. Mm-hmm. We, should, gotta, we should all become she's, therapists. She's got a whole new outlook. Now she just needs to get out of bed in the morning. Yeah, but that's and do that's the dishes. That's what with. Oh my god! Honestly, behind on the dishes. Every time I see that tally up on Scotty, I'm like, okay. But to be fair, to be fair, I literally use a coffee mug a day. If a coffee, if that. That's a not part of the day. competition. Do you wash though? it. The coffee mug. I always rinse it out. No, you don't. Oh. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I oh. usually get your coffee cup off the side of your bed and bring it to the sink myself. Oh. That is not true. I literally did it today. You literally did it today. You know how many cups and bowls and shit I bring okay. from the bedroom Either out way, to the sink. Jay uses about 25 dishes a day. So that's why there's always dishes in the sink. Yeah, Scott right. is competitive. So that's why he does the dishes. And we all know I have a problem with laziness. And that's the end of the podcast, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for listening. NGMI out. out. Wait, you can't use a problem of laziness to be lazy. That doesn't make any sense. I you're kind of saying, not having that shit. Wait, yeah. <laughs> you're saying, like, no. wait, you're excusing yourself for being lazy, saying that you're lazy. No, I'm saying. That's a, wait, that's a good point. He's saying you're using you're the saying, excuse that we, you're you lazy. You know I have a problem with being lazy, so I can't go do the dishes because I'm lazy. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, I am uh, lazy, so I don't, like, think to go see, stand and do all the dishes. But I, I, I know, I do have to pitch in more. I, I definitely do. <laughs> the fans want another tally soon, so. She'll, she'll, she'll get number two in a couple weeks, out. probably. Yeah. No, I will. I will. I will. Guys, cleaning is also not my strong suit. Again, <laughs> these are things that I am actively working on in therapy and with my psychiatrist. Okay. So <laughs> I'll come back on the podcast in like a month or two and I'll let you guys know That'll that we rank one on the tally. Now, you know what's yeah, funny? I, she, I have two tallies now. Okay. <laughs> she gets overwhelmed when there's too much of something to clean up. So That's by the time there's a full load of dishes, she's like, too many. <laughs> no, that really, that really, no, that really is been a problem my whole life. The yeah. one thing growing up, I know we literally just ended the podcast, but here we are. Uh, growing up, the one thing my mom and I used to fight about all the time was that my room was messy. Until she went to therapy and her therapist told her. 
No. Because- you guys just handled messes differently. No. <laughs> because I just, like, I get so overwhelmed by messes that I, I just don't know how I'm supposed to accomplish them. So then I just I don't do it at all. It's hard but for her to... The therapy. Goes. It's hard for her to look at one piece and... And right. pick that piece up instead of looking at the whole thing and being like, there's no way I can handle this whole situation. Yeah. When this episode comes out, I'll do a little update for the uh, the, the viewers of what the tally's at now. So oh, hopefully crap it's higher Ola. than one. I got some motivation. If this comes out in a month and it's still at one. Oh, Whoa. God. Oh, God. <laughs> no, it won't be. I'm going to go home tonight and do some dishes. Okay, right. we all know that's not true. But tomorrow, <laughs> I'm going to do some dishes. Yeah, at least you're honest. <laughs> I'm gonna do some dishes, and Kevin, I'm gonna send you a video of me. I, yeah, I want a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, you're gonna be at his graduation tomorrow. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, you can tell me. I will. You'll tell me. Impression. That is my graduation present board. to you. <laughs> Doing <laughs> one load of dishes. That's perfect. Dear Kevin, happy graduation. I, I did, did the, the dishes. dishes. <laughs> nice. All I'd right, guys, let's get the fuck out of here, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes. NGMI out. 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 Oh. <laughs>